versus the Los Angeles Dodgers. Tonight's game is brought to you by Miller High Life. Miller made the American way since 1855. By Ford and your local Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? By Discover Card. Make the smart move to Discover Card. It costs you nothing to get and pays you a yearly cash bonus. And by McDonald's. It's a good time for the great taste. Hi, everybody. I'm Vin Scully, along with Joe Garagiola. Welcome to Los Angeles. Although maybe it should be Lauren Bacall and Humphrey Bogart starring in the Have and Have Not. It's easy to figure out who the haves are and who the have-nots in this game, man. Well, the uh, New York Mets, for instance, have five pitchers who have won in double figures. They have two pitchers who have saves in double figures. That takes care of the haves. Well, the have-nots, I think the most important list would be the disabled list, 13 players the Dodgers have had on it, and a list of first basemen. They've had a lot of first basemen. Well, the Dodgers are loaded with first basemen. The other night, they had four fellows who play first base, three of them in the outfield. And the other night after that, Alex Trevino, you know, a catcher wound up playing, you guessed it, first base. The last time he played first was in Warsaw. That's Wisconsin, not Poland. I hope, I hope. <laughs> Meanwhile, the sword is trying to hold up, and Davy Johnson spins the computer. Well, you know, in a game like this, though, the Dodgers are in the role of the spoiler. You like to knock off the team that's got such a big lead, and Davy Johnson has to try to keep his ball club with that thing called momentum because they certainly have a lock on it. You know, Davy Johnson spoke to a banking group the other day, and he said, you know, I love to sit in a dugout and look over at Herzog and Lasorda. They have seniority on me, but if they keep on going the way they're going, I will pass them very shortly. So I think he's enjoying the havoc that the Mets have been raising this year. Definitely. And he also involved the Mets in several fights and the Houston Police Department. It's quite a colorful ball club. And it should be quite a ball game tonight. We'll take a look at the starting lineups. We'll have a lot more. All coming up right after the New York Mets, who have won three straight and two in a row here at Dodger Stadium. They have hammered the Dodgers six straight, and they'll start off with Mookie Wilson in center field. Tim Tuffle will be at second base, followed by Keith Hernandez at first. The kid, Kevin Mitchell, who plays six different positions this year, third base last night, and tonight he starts in left field. Darryl Strawberry in right field. Ray Knight returns to the starting lineup at third base. Ed Hearn behind the plate, spelling the injured Gary Carter, is on the DL. Rafael Santana, the shortstop. And the pitcher, former Dodger property, Sid Fernandez. The Dodgers now leaving their dugout and take the field defensively, led by their 23-year-old left-hander, Dennis Powell. Here's the uh, defense that the Dodgers will use. You'll see some kind of different names out there. Williams, Gonzalez, and Marshall in the outfield. And almost sounds like a spring training game when you read it like that, Ben. Mm -hmm. Madlock, Russell is at shortstop, and what a job he's done. Uh, uh, Candlestick, he played left field. Here he is at shortstop. Sachs is at second base. Cabell, one of the many first basemen, will be at first base tonight. Trevino is behind the plate, and Powell is the pitcher. That's a different kind of Dodger lineup. Oh, it is indeed. When you realize that for most of the year, the starting outfield, Guerrero, Landro, and Marshall have not played. They have also lost Mariano Duncan. So Dennis Powell, 23 just the other day, with a record of 2 and 4, no record against the Mets, making his first start at home. His four previous starts were on the road. In three starts, he went a little more than seven innings. And we'll see how he goes against Messrs. Wilson, Tuffle, and Hernandez. Powell earlier this year had surgery to remove bone chips from his left elbow. That was back on May the 2nd, and he was optioned to Albuquerque. He was recalled the middle of July. That's become a familiar term and a new term. They scoped his arm is the way they talk about it. They scoped his arm. He's got a good fastball, and if he's going to win tonight, he's going to have to have it. Well, his last victory was against Cincinnati. He got a big assist from Kenny Howell. He struck out a half a dozen, and we'll see how he goes against the best team in the National League, as of right now, at least in their percentages, and that, of course, would be the New York Mets. You know, listening to you give well, the New York Mets. lineup, and you said Wilson and Tuffle, you just say to yourself, that is some strength when you start to think that Dykstra and Backman are on the bench. And Dykstra and Backman, just to further shore that up, Backman is hitting 334, Dykstra is hitting 306, and they rest against left-hander Dennis Powell. 
the Mets have really put it together. And Mookie Wilson will start it off. A switch hitter batting right handed. He is a better hitter, at least his numbers tell you. He's a better hitter as a left handed batter. But he's in there this way against Powell. Ball one. We're not going to belabor the point, but the 5 o'clock start gives its shadows, a lot of brightness in the outfield. You're liable to see adventures on fly balls, hard to pick up. 1 0. Oh. And ball two, 2 0. Oh. There would be a distinct advantage because Sid Fernandez will throw harder than Powell. And in the next inning or two, Fernandez should have a big advantage over the hitters. That's a strike. Two and one. Wilson, Tuffel, Hernandez, and young Dennis Powell going to work. Big chopper to short. Russell caught in between hops and got him on a very close play. That thing really ate Russell up. He started to make a step in, tried to get the hop. That was a tough hop, all right. You'll see him. It handcuffs him. Back in it goes. But I tell you, he backed up just that half step, which made the difference. And Cabell stretch. And one thing about stretching like that, he had the glove out there. A lot of times a fellow will stretch and he'll put the glove next to his chest and he loses whatever he gains by stretching. But Cabell's been around the block a few times. So one away, and now Tim Tuffle, the batter. And if you talk about playing and trying to keep the outside world out of your mind while you're concentrating, Tuffle will have a problem. As you may or may not know, Tim Tuffle and Ron Darling received word of the indictment from Houston. And they have a date in court on August 29th, assaulting a policeman. That would really get into your concentration, to say the least. I tell you, with all the problems, there's Ron Darling. With all the problems off the field that almost everybody's had, it's almost that a scorecard should have designated lawyer or team lawyer on there. You know, two of the, the tougher competitors, I think, I've been aware of, who could block out everything and just play nine innings would be Pete Rose and Steve Garp. Without a doubt. Yeah. Unbelievable. Pete Rose, I couldn't believe what he was going through and, and seemed to enjoy just being in the middle of the uh, eye of the hurricane. 0-2 oh the count to Tim Tuffle. Ball one. One and two. The New York Mets are a very interesting ball club. The formation starting when Frank Cashin got there in 1980 and ably assisted by Joe McElvain. They have quite a team. Two and two. There were nine players from the amateur draft. They do not have any major league free agents. Then there were ten players acquired by trades. And Davy Johnson and Mel Stottlemyre also have five undrafted or minor league free agents or a player released by the major leagues. Davy on the right is a computer specialist, and that's his pitching coach, Mel Stottlemyre. You know, another guy, too, Luke Gorman was with the Mets with all that. Now he's with the Red Sox. 3 2 is lined to center for a base hit. So Tim Tuffle hangs one to center. The reason we mentioned Gorman, too, is that if the Red Sox get against the Mets, there's a guy had a hand in two ball clubs. As we look at that pitch again, right down the middle, and Tuffle sends it back up the middle where there's the most room, and he's got himself a base hit. So Tuffle hitting 239. Singles to center, and with one out, the batter is Keith Hernandez. Hernandez, as usual, good numbers, a gold glove defensively, and a big man to have up there in the clutch. One ball and no strikes. Hernandez has hit in 15 of his last 16, and he is really wearing the Dodgers out. That's against the league. His numbers against the Dodgers are even better than that. One ball, no strikes. In there, one and one. A good ball player tells you that in many ways. Look at Hernandez checking with the third base coach. Even if there's no play on, anything that the third base coach does will set up the thought in the opposition's mind, and that gives you a bit of an edge. You saw Buddy Harrelson coaching at third. Bill Robinson over at first. Good save by Trevino to short hot that ball out of the dirt. It was heading for the backstop. Two and one the count. The dimensions at Dodger Stadium 330 down the lines 360 straight away falling to the power alleys all the way to 395 and 400 to straight away center. 
a manager's delight pitch. If the Mets are going to do anything, this would be a perfect pitch. Two balls and one strike to start Tuffle. Tuffle holding, and there's a ground ball to the left of Sachs. He does a 360 for one. Back to Cabell. Double play. Russell couldn't get much on the throw, but he managed to get it over there. The end of second base, and Bill Russell at shortstop. Bill Madlock at third, and Mike Marshall in right field. Enos Cabell at first. Alex Trevino behind the plate. Reggie Williams in left. Jose Gonzalez in center, and Dennis Powell on the mound. They'll be facing left-hander Sid Fernandez. Fernandez 13 and four, one and one against the Dodgers this year, and lifetime he is two and three. You'll notice the plate umpire Larry Pensino wearing a black band on his left sleeve. All of the umpires are doing that in the memory of a lovely man and a wonderful National League umpire and a former National League pitcher, Tom Gorman, who passed away a few days ago. A lovely column in the New York Times by Ira Burko we read and in talking about Tom Gorman and his son who is a minor league umpire it was a beautiful story. Well too and wound up saying that Tom Gorman would be laid out in his casket with a rosary in one hand and an indicator in the other his umpiring cap and in his suit and the indicator it was three and two. Three and two. Both his religion I'll tell you. What a guy. He made a lot of people happy on that banquet circle, man. Lovely man. In there for a strike. Two and one, the count is Sachs. Sachs has been a very pleasant surprise for the Dodgers. He has done a lot more than they would imagine. One reason he's learned to use the whole ballpark when he hits. Chopper to third, and Ray Knight is right there to nail it. One away. You know, you're, if you'll take a look during the seconds. course of this game with Number Fernandez 18. pitching, the catcher Very Hearn, stop. until they get two strikes, will stay directly behind the plate. Davey Johnson wants him to throw strikes. If you get ahead, then you aim for the corner. And I always did believe that because if you aim for the corner and your ball moves at all, you're not going to hit it. And, and Davey calls that an unfavorable chance deviation. Oh, okay. And the first one to Russell outside. Would you say that again? Unfavorable chance deviation. If you aim for the corner and your ball moves off it, it's like a slump. You're an unfavorable chance deviation. Ball two. That's Davey Johnson here in the ballpark. You mean that guy? That's right. In the uniform with the Mets. First time he said it, I said, Davey, I'm not a computer. I'm just a catcher. <laughs> he's got it. I'm telling you, he's quite a guy to talk to. Two balls and no strikes to Russell. One out in the first inning, no score. A little low hook in there for a strike, and the count two and one. Russell, the dean of the Dodgers, he's been with him since 69. How nicknames are born. On the ball club, he was named Ropes. <laughs> R O P E S. Sort is putting another name on Larry Pensino, telling him to get the get ball up. Ball up. Two and two. Why ropes? I'll tell you in a moment. Line drive at night. Two down. When Russell was a kid and he came up to the Dodgers, the traveling secretary, Lee Scott, said, Son, I'm going to room you with Kenny Boyer so you can learn the ropes. And immediately a nickname was born <laughs> Ropes. So two down as the Dean goes back to the bat rack and the hitter will be Bill Madlock. Madlock has been a solid hitter especially after the All Star break. Of course a guy who's won four batting crowns and a distinguished career figures to him. Two down first inning no score. That's right. Fernandez pitched a game against the Cubs the end of July. He recorded the first nine outs of that game by strikeouts. He had 11 strikeouts in the game and he lost the game. So that'll give you an idea of what kind of a pitcher he is. He can be brilliantly ineffective, <laughs> Davey Johnson. <laughs> brilliantly ineffective. Oh, and two. And there's a base hit from Adlai. As he becomes a senior citizen in the National League, in his early days with the Cubs in Pittsburgh, he was called Mad Dog. He was forever getting in fights with umpires. 
Now he is affectionately known as Doggy, like they call Tony Perez. So from Mad Dog to Doggy. <laughs> well, here's a newcomer to the Dodger lineup. They haven't seen very much of him, Mike Marshall. That's one reason. The other reason is he is plagued by a bad back. Those three hits, that goes all the way back to the 4th of July. <clears throat> Mike's been on a disabled list with the bad back. Two out, first inning, no score. Marshall a hitter and Enos Cabell on deck. Strike. You take Guerrero and Marshall out of your lineup, you don't figure to win. No. Nope. You know what? You just compare these two teams. Marshall has 50 RBIs. He is the only Dodger with 50 RBIs. The Mets have four fellas with over 50. The Red Sox have a half a dozen. It's a lot of firepower. Yes, sir. One ball, one strike. Sid Fernandez and Ed Hearn with an infield of Hernandez and Tuffle, Santana and Knight, Mitchell, Wilson and Strawberry in the outfield. A very hot day in Los Angeles. Temperature got up to around 100 degrees. One and two. He really changed speeds well on that one. Marshall way out in front. He pulled the string and you'll see Marshall way out. Mike Brito with that gun must have got him about 28 miles an hour with that one. <laughs> Tell him to pull over. <laughs> Curveball hit down to third. Knight up with it. And they'll get the four. So Ray Knight handles all of them. A base hit and nothing else. And at the end of an inning, no score. Magnificent seven week. An exciting preview of L.A. Law created by Stephen Bochco of Hill Street Blues. And don't forget Our House, starring Wilford Brimley and Deidre Hall, also premiering. Kevin Mitchell, followed by Darryl Strawberry and then Ray Knight. Mitchell is one of the great stories of the year in the National League. A kid out of San Diego from the mean streets of the border city. He was heavily involved in gangs down there and in a sense owes his life, I guess, to baseball. And what a player. Kevin has started six different positions. And about six weeks ago, he was hitting as much as 370. He's something. Those were all his positions. Sir, gives a lot of credit to his grandma. Ball one. He hit one out into the left field seats last night. Not only has he played six different positions, he has batted in each of the top eight positions in the batting order. And he's hitting cleanup tonight. And lifts a fly ball to center. Waiting there is Jose Gonzalez. I tell you, it's great to see him blow bubbles rather than chew that tobacco. And how? He's some kid. He's coming off a beanie. He was hit in the head by Jay Tibbs. Hey, Phil Collier, fine writer in San Diego, is doing a piece on on Mitchell who was beaned, and Davy Johnson was telling him about he was beaned when he was playing at Elmira, the team managed by Earl Weaver. That's right. And Davy said he was hit right in the middle of the face, just under the nose. And for two years, he might be walking along the street, and all of a sudden he'd see the ball and he'd sure. flinch. Sure. Scary. In fact, you wonder, after a player has been beaned, how he would ever come back. I never was beaned, but I, I was catching when I saw Stan Rojak get it. It was scary. Oh. One ball, one strike. Fouled away. If Daryl Strawberry's helmet comes flying off, he is like in boot camp, a skinhead. And the reason Kevin, yeah, well, no, no, nothing intended, but Kevin Mitchell was going to give me a haircut, and they tell me the haircut didn't come out right, so he finally said, oh, the heck with him, shaved it all off. <laughs> <laughs> One and two. Slow roller to Sachs. So you look at his head, look like he used a power mower on him. <laughs> Two down in the second inning, and Ray Knight coming up. Ray Knight. Hey, what you doing? For Ray Knight, this is a very important year, and for the Mets, they're going to have to make a big decision about Ray and his future with the ball club. They have Knight, they have Howard Johnson, they have the kid Kevin Mitchell, and one of the brighter prospects in the minor leagues is a young third baseman. Right. Knight says, I'm just going to do my job, and it's up to them. Mm -hmm. That's about all he can do. 0 oh 1 to count to Ray. Two out in the second inning. No score. 
The Mets last won in 1973. And if you remember that year, in August on this date, that team was 13 games under 500. There's a base hit in the left field. And what the Mets did then was turn around and win 21 of the next 29 games and win the division. And in 73, they were the worst first place team in history. But boy, not this time. Even the Mets in 69, the year of the impossible dream, they were seven back of the Cubs on this date. And they went on to win 32 of the 43 remaining games. Went on to win everything in sight. So this year, it looks like they're certainly on their way to win, and they will not have to come from behind. They're going almost wire to wire. They've been in first place since the 24th of April. Brown foul outside of third. One ball, one strike. Young Ed Hearn getting a lot of playing time right now with Gary Carter sideline with a bad thumb. Well, too. It's interesting that Carter seriously injured twice to go on the DL. Once playing the outfield, 1976, he was in a collision in Montreal with Pepe Mangual and ripped up his thumb. And then this year he did it playing first base. Well, you see, catching must be an easy job. I'm going to tell you something. Catching is a safe job. It looks much tougher than it is, and you can oversimplify it by saying if you have good pitching, they'll strike out a lot of batters so you don't get hurt. If you have bad pitching, the ball will stop about two feet in front of you, so you're not going to get hurt that way. Just as long as your knees hold up, huh? Yeah, well, they'll hold up. They won't be recalled. Two balls, two strikes. Ball three. Hearn, who is asked to do a lot of catching now, Ironically, played twice as many games at first base than behind the plate at Tidewater. He's known more for his defensive ability, all on the game we saw him. Then he got a couple base hits, hit the ball hard in right center field. Well, we'll see what happens to it now. Three and two. Knight goes and he hammers it to center for a base hit. So Ray will turn and hold as Gonzalez gets it into Russell. So with two out, back to back singles by Knight and Hearn. Well, Powell certainly wasn't going to walk him. He lays a fastball right in there, and Ed Hearn just sends it right back up the middle. And they've got something going. Two on, two out, and Rafael Santana coming up. Santana, two for four last night. He had a couple of base hits against Fernando Valenzuela. That got him up to 200. He's one of the eight Major League shortstops who call the Dominican Brock. Republic home. And meanwhile, the umpires are calling balk on Dennis Powell. Can't pinpoint until I see it again and maybe miss it then, but it looked like a, one of those lack of concentration balks where he started to go and then just stopped. There it is, right there, and now he stops. Oh, yeah. It's just lack of concentration. That's what it looked like. You see Trevino say, what are you doing, man? Mm. And Powell says, if I knew what I was doing, I wouldn't have done it, man. Well, he's just 23, and now they will walk Santana and take their chances with Sid Fernandez. And even if the Mets don't score, what a big play that is because you got Fernandez out of the way. Uh, he won't be there to clog up the baselines. However, I'll tell you, the Dodgers and most managers would give this kind of a walk very grudgingly. First of all, Lasorda would ideally like to have Fernandez leading off sure. the following inning. And Santana's not a hitter. You saw his average 200. He's hitting 160 with men in scoring position. However, Lasorda... Decides he'll perhaps try to help the kid pitcher out. The kid's upset enough giving up two base hits with two out on a balk. Well, he figures, okay, you can get out of it against your opposite number. So we'll see if he does. Sid Fernandez coming up. Sid Fernandez has nine hits and two runs batted in. The top Mets pitchers, as far as hitting is concerned, Aguilera. Darling.
Sterling has seven hits and Fernandez nine. And Fernandez nine would be tops on the squad. Hit up the middle. One run is in, two runs in. Gonzalez overruns the ball. Going to third and holding is Santana. So Sid Fernandez lined one right through Dennis Powell's legs. Looked like a fastball right down the middle, and uh, Fernandez did not swing that hard, just sent it back up the middle. And it's all Powell's doing. There it is, right through his legs. Gonzalez takes his eye off the ball, and whoops, forgot to pick it up. You know, the 3-2 pitch to Hearn, remember, he got behind Hearn after two were out. Knight got a base hit after two out, and then Hearn, three and two, got a base hit. Santana, after the ball, gets the intentional walk, and you can see how trouble can build. Build indeed, and now Mookie Wilson takes him into left center. Gonzalez makes the circus catch. Oh, what a play by the 21-year-old kid. Oh, set this one in your ring. After making an error on the previous play. A sensational catch it is. Not only does he time it perfectly, but watch now as we roll it, where his glove lands after he catches the ball. Many times that'll jar loose, but look what he does. He clamps it, lands on it, almost like it was rubber on him. And that, to me, was just icing on the cake. You know, he's only 21 years old, but Jose Gonzalez started as a professional ball player in the United States at 16. He's from the Dominican Republic. 16. You've been playing a long time over here. You know what he's thinking about now, that error? Oh, yeah. Because he's a good ball player. And why did I do that? Something, you know, you make an error, and the next thing you know, a circus catch. And here is Enos Cabell, followed by Alex Trevino, and then Reggie Williams. Two to nothing Mets. Fouled away. Cabell was kicked out of the game the other night, arguing with Frank Pooley, who is the third base umpire tonight. And after the game, the writers went down and said to Cabell, what did you say? <laughs> he said, I said he's the nicest umpire in the league. And <laughs> you believe that? <laughs> yeah, there's Frank. The nicest umpire in the league. And Pooley said, I threw him out because I'm not. <laughs> A little foul out of play in the count 0 and 2. You know, we all know about Fernando Valenzuela's great look towards the sky when he pitches, which can be unnerving if you're the batter. Sid Fernandez looks away right before he's ready to deliver the ball. He looks to the ground. Now he concentrates when he gets that sign, and he's looking at the catcher for a split second. He looks away, and if you're hitting, that's not good. Right there. One and two. Looking over at Stottlemyre, saying, is this the way to do it? Boy, I tell you, as a batter, Vin, you want to say, over here, pal. Yeah. I'm over here, yes. over here. Well, there's his pitching coach watching his every move. One and two. Off speed and just missed with it. Boy, he threw a balloon up there. Two and two. Fernandez trying to win his 14th. The Mets have five pitchers who have won in double figures. They have two pitchers who have saved in double figures. speed and another change when a guy can throw that hard and change his speeds I'm telling you you can feel the pressure on your shoestrings well there's a quintet of five double figure winners the only team in the majors remarkable group and of course Roger McDowell along with 12 wins has 14 saves I guess of all the recent trades, the Mets have made some wonderful deals, including to get Fernandez, and remember they traded Lee Mazzilli and got Ron Darling and Walt Terrell. Maybe the only trade the Mets have made that didn't pan out in a while was the deal that sent Mike Scott away, and Scotty's just about the top pitcher in the league. They got Danny Heap, who has done a good job, but that's the only trade you could really debate about in recent times. Every club has made trades they just as soon forget about. Three and two. Two to nothing Mets second inning. Foul back. A pattern has been established in the first game. The Mets got out in front five to nothing and the Dodgers got it to five four and lost. Last night the Mets got out in front four to nothing. The Dodgers tied at four four and the Mets went on to win six four. 
And the Mets jumping out in front again tonight. 2 nothing. Fouled away out of play. Mets have won three in a row. They lead the Expos by 18. Immediately you start looking back about big leads. The 75 Reds won by 20. The 83 Chicago White Sox won by 20. Little fly ball to center hesitating in the twilight is Wilson but Mookie makes the play one down. The biggest spread I guess would be the Pittsburgh Pirates way back in 1902. They won by 27 and a half. Well that's how Davey looks at it. That's one reason why he brought in Roger McDowell last night. McDowell is relieved in four straight. Well he said I had a chance to get a win. I wanted it. He doesn't take anything for granted. Ball one to Alex Trevino. And in talking about next year already he says things like I know what our weaknesses are and we're going to do something about them. Davey of course not only managing a ball club that's going to win a lot of games. He played second base for the 69 Baltimore club that won 109 and the 70 Baltimore club that won 108. Two and one. The Mets and it's really interesting when you start talking about how many games they might win. The winning percentage is always important too. Ball three. Can they be a hundred percentage points ahead of every other team? Well, the last two clubs to do that, the 41 Yankees and the 43 Cardinals. So what we're saying is this is quite a ball club. It is, and I tell you, you have to give Davey a lot of credit for the young pitching that he's come up with. Uh, and they've really done a job of Fernandez a good one. Mm -hmm. Little foul. That'll go upstairs just above us, and the count remains three and two. It's two to nothing in favor of the Mets if you join us late with two out. Knight single to left. Hearn single to center. A balk put runners at second and third. They walk Santana intentionally, and Fernandez singled in two runs. Another foul out of play. When they talk about Fernandez, you always hear the word, well, he's matured. But the big thing Davey says that he doesn't back off on his fastball like he used to. And here's a pretty good example. He's down to three and two. He's just coming in with that good fastball as if to say, hey, my fastball is better than your ability to hit it. Three and two. And there it is. That's the reason we made the point at the start of the game that it would figure Fernandez has more of an edge at this time of day than Dennis Powell. Because Fernandez throws harder, and in the twilight time, he's going to be particularly tough to hit. We have a bright sky, as you can see, plenty of sunshine. It's coming up 6 p.m. in Los Angeles. And he'll take advantage of all of that. And as a catcher, you usually say things like, boy, it's tough to see back here. Mm. Anything to psych the hitter. Anything. <laughs> Here's Reggie Williams. Reggie hitting 278, and he has done very well. He's gotten over 300 against left-hand pitching. Big, slow breaking ball. One ball, one strike. We pointed him out before. He's a fixture here. See the gentleman in the dark blue sports shirt and the white Panama hat with a cigar and holding in his hand? That's Mike Brito. You could hit 300 with that cigar. And he'll use that speed gun. One and two. Mets two, Dodgers nothing. The Mets have not swept a three game series at Dodger Stadium since 1968. And they're trying to do that tonight. And that takes care of Reggie. The only surprise so far, that's only the first strikeout for Fernandez. And it'll bring up the kid who made the error and then followed with the great play against Luki Wilson, young Jose Gonzalez. Jose, a youngster from the Dominican, and admittedly kind of a timid player when he first came up, and Lasorda. 
insisted that he attack the ball. He said, don't worry about striking out. I want you to swing hard. Don't just try to, to hit the ball somewhere. Rip it. It'll be interesting to see if that bit of philosophy pays off or not. It's hard to be timid around Lasorda, I'll tell you that. And he has not done much against left-handers at all. 1-0. Oh. Ball two. I've been watching Hearn, and he just doesn't move. He's right directly behind that plate, as if to say to Fernandez, you throw it down the middle, your ball is moving, it'll catch the corner. 2-0 oh, the count. Ball three. Were you a quiet catcher? By that I mean, did you assume a position and pretty much stay there? Not no. a lot of bouncing around? Well, I tried not to bounce around, but I moved around because I think you have to remind pitchers unless they come to you and say, hey, it's distracting. Three and oh. Down to fight. Three and one. That's two it. down, second inning, two nothing Mets. I believe like Davey, though, you can't shoot for the corner and, and hit it if your ball is moving. And he's walking. So two walks with two out. Dennis Powell will be the batter. Now Fernandez got a base hit to drive in two runs. Dennis Powell has three hits. No RBIs. One of the things that Davey talks about is how he's matured and where he doesn't show any emotion at all. Now, he is upset with himself, but you don't want to show that because if you're upset, you're going to upset your infield. Obviously, they've switched signs, and Sid wasn't uh, too sure of him, so he said, well, I think we'll use the second sign or the third sign or whatever. They're not as complicated as they look. Talking about making things uncomplicated, Dennis Powell is batting right-handed, and he has always been a left-handed batter, but he's decided to go the other way against Fernandez. Let's see if he has a right-handed swing. Could it be that they told him we want to protect your right arm and keep it away from the pitcher? If you get hit with the ball, it'll be your left arm. But that's not good. No, not with him. He has the wrong arm out. That's front. right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, he doesn't have a right-handed swing. <laughs> he doesn't have a right-handed swing. Oh, and two. Watch his back foot too. There, he's not really in there. Now the back foot is going to kind of come right out of there. See it? That's not much. You're not driving that ball swing like that. Okay, we'll try it left-handed next time. <laughs> <laughs> two men left on, and at the end of two, two ball, it would make it virtually impossible for the Expos to do anything if the Mets play better. And I certainly think they will. It's a question now, as we said earlier, just how many they will win. And remember, Davey was on two clubs that won 108 and 109, and he'll go to the whip to Second keep the baseman. intensity. Tim and I'm Trouble. sure that's part of the conversation. How many can we possibly win? The winning team, the Cubs, won 116. Then Cleveland, 111. Pirates and Yankees won 110 way back when. He's got himself a club, and we'll see just how far he can go. Ball one. Tim Tuffle, followed by Keith Hernandez, and then Kevin Mitchell. Tuffle a base hit in the first inning. Chopper to the right side. Bad hop. Boy, did that kangaroo over the head of Steve Sack. So Tuffle, two for two, thanks to the bad hop single. Looked like Sachs was going to have an easy play. He's got it all the way in, and whoops, there she goes. He can't believe it. If you're an infielder on a ball like that, the first thing you do is run your tongue along your teeth and think of what might have happened. That's right, especially mm. if you like corn on a cob. Oh. Keith Hernandez hit into a double play in the first inning, 0 for 1. The Mets are leading two to nothing, top of the third inning. This was supposed to be a very tough time for the Mets. They're on a stretch where they play six of seven road series. The only home series, six games against the Cardinals. And if you remember, they won the first game, lost four in a row, and then won the last game. But boy, are they breezing on this supposedly tough part of the schedule. 
an 18-game lead. The toughest thing they got is if the team bus is late. <laughs> Gary Carter down there behind Strawberry. One ball and no strikes to Hernandez. And there goes the runner and the hit and run foul ball into the far end of the Dodger dugout. We were talking earlier about a trade that Lee Mazzilli went to Texas and the Mets got Darling and Terrell. Then they traded Terrell to Detroit for Howard Johnson. Well, Terrell's in the news. Through six innings, he has a no hitter against the California Angels. We had a near miss today. Don Carmen had a perfect game broken up in the ninth inning. Philadelphia eventually won in 10 innings. Carmen's perfect game was broken up. A leadoff double by Bob Brenly on a ball that looked like it should have been caught by Milt Thompson. One and two the count to Keith Hernandez. Tuffle going on the last pitch. Talked about the Mets losing four straight during that series with the Cardinals. Show you how powerful they have been all year. There's a one hopper that's through in the center. So a bad hop single followed by a shot. And the Mets have runners at first and second and nobody out. Hernandez, who does have that I'm reputation going. of being a good two strike hitter, here's why. Ball is outside. He just sends it right back up the middle. Had he tried to pull that ball, it would have been a perfect room service double play. But he sends it back up the middle, and they've got it going now with Mitchell, Strawberry, and Knight coming up. Mitchell taking a hard look at his third base coach. But if he'd get the bunt sign now, I think he'd just faint in shock. <laughs> it's 2 0 Mets looking for more. They piled up a half a dozen hits against Dennis Powell. Joe Beckwith begins to throw in the Dodger bullpen. Ball one. There's Beckwith. When the Mets had that four game losing streak, it points up the fact that 11 major league teams had at least four game losing streaks in April. Pitch in the dirt and the runners hold. The Chicago White Sox lost the first four games they played all year. The Boston Red Sox had a four game losing streak in July. Anytime a ball club does not go into a severe nosedive, you know it's got some solid pitching. 2-0 to Kevin Mitchell. Ground ball, one-handed by Madline to Sacks for one to Cabell not in time. The Madlock flagging it and one-happing it and got the force play. I think both Madlock and Sachs were surprised that they had the ball. Watch Madlock on his play. That ball is well hit. He short hops it. Whoops, I got it. Now Sachs takes a little bit extra because he's not sure he's got it right there. And now he gets a good grip on it, but it's too late for the double play. So the batter now, Daryl Strawberry, who grounded out in the second inning. He's had a big series here. A local boy coming home against Oral Hershiser. He had a single and a monstrous two run home run last night. He had two singles a double and a walk against Hershiser Joe. He got a high change up mm -hmm. out and away and he hit it into the left center field bleachers uh, a high change. Oh what a shot. It. You have to generate your own power when you hit him that far the opposite field. I'll say one thing, Ben. He's got to be the best dressed player in the batter's box with those nice gloves that he has on. He'll look nice when he gets on base. <laughs> he didn't have wristbands. They're almost forearm bands. Throw down to third. Close, but no cigar. Tuffle back to the bag. Mitchell holding at first. And the count to Darryl Strawberry. One ball and two strikes. Two nothing New York. And the breaking ball down and away. That takes care of him. 
He's out of the strike zone, a big breaking ball, and Strawberry really didn't have a good cut at it at all. He's completely fooled by it. Whoops. Had that married man stands there, the left-hander. <laughs> With two out, the batter now is Ray Knight as Dennis Powell tries to fight his way out of a jam, and he's been victimized by the bad hop. The bad hop should have been an out. He'd be out of the inning. So Steve Sachs also knows about being the victim of the hop. 1 and 0, the count to Ray Knight. Tuffle at third, Mitchell at first. And a base hit to center to make it 3 to nothing. All year long, Knight has been a big hitter with men in scoring position, and it continues for him. The Knight picks him up, 3 to nothing, New York. And the bad hop single by Tuffle is cashed in. Sort of fit to be tied, muttering to himself, and I know what he's saying. Boy, when you're going good, everything I'm wanting, you know, and I'm bad hopping, and I'm right. <laughs> oh, oh, absolutely. With a few bleeps in there. Oh yeah. Ed Hearn's single to center in the second inning was balked to second and came home on a base hit. Hitting 282. Two balls, no strikes. He got behind him the last time up in her and he got the base hit to center field. Madlock, I'm sure, is just going to go over and tell the youngster, hey, you got to throw some strikes. You don't want to walk this guy. The numbers tell you how tough the Mets are once they get out in front. If they get out in front, they almost are a cinch to win eight out of ten, almost. And with that remarkable bullpen that they have, they never let a ball game get away in the late innings. There's a shot into left field for a base hit. And here comes Kevin Mitchell, cut off by Madlock over to Russell. And they've got Knight hung up, and it'll be Sachs tagging him out. So the throw going 7 5 6 4. However, the Mets add two, and at the end of two and a half, Mets four. Hearn gets the base hit, and the advantage of seeing this play is shows you what the cutoff man means. Williams has no chance to get Mitchell. Madlock cuts it off, and Ray Knight is in no man's land. One throw by Russell, and that's executed perfectly, but it cost him a run. So it is four to nothing Mets. That means for three nights in a row, the Mets have jumped out to a four to nothing lead. By the way, Walt Terrell retired the Angels in the seventh without allowing a hit. So Detroit comes up in the bottom of the seventh inning. Terrell, the ex Met, and the ex Ranger still working on a no hitter. Fouled away. Ooh, one and one. Got Hearn solid, but he's not even, ch yeah, he's checking his mask. Now he is. That'll fog your glasses. It's a little tough, too, catching with glasses. Oh, watch his ball goes right off his mask. Don't. Remember years ago, Stan Lopata used to wear glasses that were tinted because mm. the lights bothered him at night. Ball two, two and one. Stan, the big, likable catcher for the Phillies. Was he strong? Oh. <laughs> Sacks grounded out in the first inning and fists one foul two and two. The Dodgers have done a complete about face last year they were a very successful road club in fact last year the Dodgers went into first place on the road this year Lasorda has seen his ball club get killed on the road and now they're home and they've lost the first two of the homestand out away. The Dodgers had a closed clubhouse, closed door clubhouse meeting, and no way you can find out what they were talking about. But I'm sure Tommy gave one of his great sermons on the mound. Well, there were two notes in the papers now that show some rumbling going on. A ball club that's unhappy with itself. Down goes Steve Sack. Take a look at this breaking ball George from Sid Fernandez. Not only a breaking ball, but he changes speeds, and all that Sachs can do is watch it go by and genuflect in total reverence. 
He can't do anything. Hello. Mm. And Bill Russell will be the batter. Ball one. The two items in the paper, one said that Mariano Duncan was annoyed over a writer's accusation that he took too long to heal from a bad ankle. So the other night when he was hit on the foot by a throw, he didn't tell anybody and played on the bad foot. Aggravated what turns out to be a fractured bone, and he's out for maybe the year. Two down. And then the other note that surfaced. Bill Matlock. Bill Russell and Mike Marshall evidently having some words about Marshall not playing. It's just a sign of they talk about the winter of your discontent. This is the summer of the discontent here. Ben, I've been on both type ball clubs. When two ball players get into it, if you're on a winning team, that is aggressive spirit. If you're on a losing team, it's dissension. Mm -hmm. Here's Bill Madlock, who singled in the first inning. Away. Once again, we'd like to remind our viewers we'll be selecting the NBC Miller Lite player of the game at the conclusion of the ball game. 0 and 1, the count of Bill Madlock. The Mets are leading 4 to nothing. They picked up two runs on three hits in the second inning, added two more in the third at the expense of Dennis Powell. Sid Fernandez, one and one against the Dodgers. A couple of years ago, he beat the Dodgers here three to two. Off speed. This year, he lost to the Dodgers in Los Angeles, and he defeated them five to two in New York. So one and one this year, two three lifetime. Three and one. In the first game, the Mets had seven hits, including two home runs in the first five innings. Last night, they had eight hits in the first four innings. And tonight, they have eight hits in the first three innings. So they have really jumped out on the Dodgers from the opening pitch. Got him, and he blew him away with a fastball. Four strikeouts for Sid, and at the end of three, four not at the end of three innings, so they go to the bullpen and bring in Joe Beckwith to pick up for the young left-hander Dennis Powell. Beckwith, with the Dodgers, wound up with the championship Kansas City, then went over into the minor leagues for Toronto at Syracuse. The Dodgers picked him up and brought him back. And Joe has been a little rocky since coming back. He's been scored on in four of his six outings, and he has allowed four home runs in a very short span, five and two-third innings. But we'll see how he goes against Santana, Fernandez, and Wilson. You know, we were talking before about the grumbling and about a writer and a grumbling in the in the dressing room. Down through the years, there have been classic confrontations amongst players on the same team. The first one I ever heard about, Frankie Frisch used to tell a great story about the two Dean brothers and Joe Medwick with the Gas House game. And, uh... Here's Santana. Strike. Medwick made an error, allowed a run, and when he came into the bench, Dizzy said, how can you win when you got a guy playing left field on roller skates? Mm. That upset Joe. <laughs> And one and one. He had a three-run homer. He came in. He says, "There, you big mouth. You run back and two more to boot." And with that, Diz started after him. And Paul, his brother, got up to help him. Joe grabbed the bat. He said, "You both come at me. I'll split both of your heads." <laughs> one and one. But that was the gas house gang. Frankie said, "I got my most valuable player outfielder and my two-star pitchers, and they want to split heads." Yeah. But they won the pennant. Two and one. They got to Santana. Ball three. I always loved the story about Tommy Lasorda pitching in the minor leagues. I think it might have been in uh, winter ball in Cuba, somewhere in Latin America. His teammate was George Freeze playing the outfield. There's a shot down the left field line, foul. And Gene Freeze, George's brother, was on the other team. And Lasorda got annoyed. It was one of those knockdown situations. So Lasorda, who can barely watch tonight, <laughs> knocked Gene Freeze down. And then knocked him down again. And Freeze comes out to the mound. And Lasorda's all set to wind up and throw a haymaker. And somebody's on his back hitting him on the head. 
Sachse will take care of San Adams. And it turned out it was his own center fielder, George, who was coming in to defend his brother's <laughs> honor. I mean, you can really get in a mess when you get between brothers. <laughs> Did you ever get into a fight? Oh, yeah. I mean, with anybody on your own team. And not on my own no. team, no. I saw Terry Moore try to hang a pitcher on the hook one day with the Cardinals. I was just a rookie in 46. Hang him on a hook? Did we had those hangers in the uh -huh. dugout. He grabbed the pitcher and tried to put a hole in his shirt and hang him up there. But Terry Moore was one of the strongest guys I was ever around. I used to call him Sir. Sid Fernandez got a base hit in the second inning to drive in two runs. The Mets are leading 4 0. We're in the fourth inning with one out. Beckwith trying to restore a little order. Big chopper to Cabell, and it gets by him, and Fernandez safely aboard. That'll be the second Dodger error. He had so much time, and yet he played the short hop, and he's really surrounded that ball. I mean, that ball attacked him, and it was going to hit that hard. Now watch, he tries to get the short hop. Oop. Hit him on both knees, and... Fernandez really is not a fast runner. He had plenty of time. So an error at first base by Enos Cabell. And the batter will be Mookie Wilson, who grounded to short and then was robbed on the defensive play of the night. A diving catch by Jose Gonzalez in the second inning. So Mookie 0 for 2. Fouled away. Mookie was originally drafted by the Dodgers back in 1976, but he didn't sign. You have to like this fella for his attitude plus his ability. When he talks about Dykstra, he said Dykstra brings a dimension I can't. One and one. Mookie, of course, started off the year in spring training, struck in the eye. The Mets were practicing a rundown play, and that put him on the shelf for a long time, but he's come back to do well. And dig those shoes. <laughs> Out away. There's Lenny Dykstra. A hard nosed kid. They call him Nails. The two of them. Look, look at Yeah, Wally Backman and. Both led art left over from a dead end movie. Backman and Dykstra. <laughs> Two little guys, one's 5'9", the other 5'10", they each weigh 160 pounds, and have they ever done more than carry their own weight? Mookie fouls it away, still one and two. Mookie might have the sharpest shoes in town. He spends a little money down there on the leather. I think they're patent leather. Look great. Mm. The game's rained out. He can always go dancing. Two and two. Yeah, see that? Look at that shine. <laughs> Gotta look nice. Way to go, Mook. <laughs> Way to go. And he promptly bangs it into left field for a base hit. Fernandez to second and holding there. So the Mets... Got a bad hop single in the third inning for the overture and went on to score two. Now with Second one out and error, and Wilson follows with a single, and Tim Tuffle is the batter. Tuffle single to center in the first, and then got the bad hop single in the third. Four runs, nine hits for the Mets. We're only in the fourth inning. Lasorda and Paranowski look like they're in for a long night. Again. And there's one into left field. Reggie Williams has to have it fall in front. Tries to get a force but can't and the bases are loaded. Ball looked like it was hit off the handle, but it didn't look like it was going to be caught. And all of a sudden, uh, Reggie stopped, and the bases are loaded. I tell you one thing: as far as Tim Tuffle is concerned, he's having a big night in the box score. Certainly is that. He's three for three. One is a bad hop single and a fly ball single. With one of the oldest expressions in baseball, they all look like line drives in the box score. So the bases are loaded. One out, 
And Keith Hernandez, the batter. Tim Tuffle. Happy as a clam down there at first. Wilson at second. Fernandez at third. I think he was able to block out the news from Houston. Yeah, he wasn't worrying about his recent trouble along with Ron Darling. Fouled away. And remember, he's been wearing the Dodgers out. He's hitting over 420 against them. See him remind himself to be sure to turn that shoulder in. On one to keep. Hernandez, Wilson, and Tuffle out on the line. One and one. The mark that his father saw and told him about, he was not able to see any of the number when he took his stance ready to hit. His father watching him on the satellite dish out in California, told him in Atlanta, he went on a tear and watches it all the time. You see, you can't see the number, and when he gets set, you'll see the number. One and two. So Jay Beckwith up to his hips in trouble. Keith Hernandez trying to hammer him, and it's already four to nothing in favor of the Mets. Mets trying to win seven straight from the Dodgers, seven out of nine, and sweep a three-game series here for the first time since 1968. One and two, the count to Keith Hernandez. the Dodgers can thank their stars they have had so many successful years for instance the last time the Mets won was 1973 since that time Guerrero Moda and company well they've seen the pennant flying they've won in 74 77 78 81 83 and 85 so they're going to have a bad year they've at least built up an awful lot of good ones before it just off the corner two and two well, he started to go for that pitch. It was a good pitch by Beckwith and just great bat control by Hernandez. Trevino on the outside corner, and he starts after it and just holds it up. Though so the base loaded, one out. Beckwith going two and two on Hernandez. Missed again away. Well, the pitcher's moment of truth. Full count, bases loaded. Better remind those runners only one out. Sometimes on a base on balls, you'll see that guy from third start in. Hernandez at third, Wilson at second, Tuffle at first. One out. Fouled away. battling Hernandez with the base and loaded one out three balls two strikes fouled away again friends the last we heard Walt Terrell is pitching a no hitter now Detroit in the bottom of the eighth inning leading two to nothing when Terrell goes to the mound in the ninth inning in Detroit working on that no hitter we would like to share all the excitement with you we want you to be right there in spirit at least and we're not going to miss that opportunity. So when Terrell goes to pitching we'll go to Detroit. He has a no hitter through eight innings. Line drive in the right field. In comes Fernandez. In comes Wilson. Tuffle to third. Six to nothing Mets. With a string of deuces on the scoreboard. The Wolves are howling a little bit at Dodger Stadium. In fact, Lasorda summed it all up last night when he said it sounded like we were on the road. So Tommy right now down six nothing. And Joe Beckwith being lathered with a one out error and then three consecutive hits. So the Mets with two in the second, two in the third, two in the fourth, and Alejandro Pena begins to loosen up in the pen. 
Ball one to Kevin Mitchell. We were talking before about the Mets and how great they are when they get out in front. They've only lost four games this year when they've led after six innings. Roller up along third. Madlock has to go to Trevino for the tag. And that's it. The run is at first and second with two out. So Mitchell aboard on the fielder's choice. Hernandez to second and Tuffle cut down 5-2. And the battle will be Darryl Strawberry. Show you another glaring difference between the two teams. You know how many games the Mets have lost when they're leading going into the ninth inning? One. 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 Mm. You know how many games the Dodgers have lost leading going into the ninth? Ten. Big difference, huh? Well, about the difference in the standings. Tell you a lot. Well, here's Darryl Strawberry grounded out and struck out. Four one. Every time Darryl comes here, you know he leads the league in a pass list, family and friends, and he's making the most of it. First year he'd come here and he just get himself into a slump trying too hard. Now as he gets a little older and more mature, he doesn't press in front of the home folks. Fouled away. I remember one of the reasons that they gave for his slump in Dodger Stadium is that he would put on such an exhibition in batting practice hitting home run after home run and everybody who went on and it would just develop bad habits that he wouldn't get out of until he left here. But now he's a little bit older and been around a while he didn't do that. You know the kid at first base Kevin Mitchell who just hit into that field his choice. He had a similar situation occur in Wrigley Field Chicago. One and two. Kevin Mitchell was playing in Wrigley Field and he was going very well and his father came to see him play his mm. dad had never seen him play in the big leagues and he said I was going to hit a home run for my father <laughs> see you later boy he went over for Chicago <laughs> oh for Chicago hey, that was new he's got a muscle band on his left arm two and two by the way for the drama in the ninth inning in Detroit the angel hitters are Gary Pettis Jack Howell and Wally Joyner did you ever see that before on his muscle? No. Of course, he's got muscles where most of us don't have places. Yeah. <laughs> two and two. All three. Well, did you read about the soul singer who said that when he sang, he got so worked up, he sweated through the soles of his shoes? James Brown. There you go, baby. Sure. Well, maybe he sweats through his arm. <laughs> <laughs> sure. James Brown, he feels it. Downtown Brown. Three and two, so the runners are gone. Hernandez and Mitchell, and so is Strawberry going to get his glove. However, the Mets get two more, and at the end of three and a half, six nothing New York. His fingers of a virtuoso artist in the art of throwing a baseball. Who is it? There it is. Fernando Valenzuela. You know when uh what he's doing, I'm sure, is just keeping the feel of it. When I broke in with the Cardinals and Mr. Ricky was there, he made all the young catchers at that time walk around with the ball so that wherever you would grab the ball, you grabbed it across seams. You went to the movie, you better have a baseball in your hand to make sure you could grab it across the seam so when you threw it, it wouldn't sail. That was one of his. That may be what he's doing. Mike Marshall, Enos Cabell, and Alex Trevino. It is six to nothing Mets. Fouled away. Don't forget, the Tigers are still hitting in the bottom of the eighth. And when we go to the top of the ninth in Detroit, the Angels will have Gary Pettis, Jack Howell, and Wally Joyner, and Walt Terrell, the former Met, trying for a no-hitter, and we will go to Tiger Stadium. That's pretty much of a blowout now as Alan Trammell homered. Detroit is now leading 3-0 in the eighth, so the big story will be Walt Terrell's performance in the ninth. Our game, 6-0 Mets. We're in the fourth. 0-2. Fouled away. Remember Ernie Bonham who pitched sure. for the Yankees? Now, Ernie Bonham had an idea, and I don't know of any other pitcher who did. But you see hitters in the old days, they would swing three bats to make the game bat seem lighter. Now you have the metal donut that you put on the bat. Bonham carried a weighted ball mm -hmm. so that the baseball felt even lighter than five and a quarter ounces. Ball one. Did you know anybody else would do that? I never heard of anybody else, but there was Bonham walking around with that, that weighted ball. Pittsburgh Club, when I was there, still had the weighted ball around there. I don't know if he did it with the Yankees or with Pittsburgh. Uh, one and two. And down goes Marshall. Five 
strikeouts for Sid Fernandez. And let's face it, this is a killer of a night for the Dodgers. They are playing poorly. They've committed two errors. They're losing six to nothing. And a former Dodger kid is sticking it to them. He's allowed one hit and struck out five. And the shortage almost too much to bear. Enos Cabell flied to center in the second inning. Ball one. Cabell for the last three years has hit around 320 against left handers and he's improved on that this year. Like most Americans I've been reading about this new tax bill and Mike Brito's gun leaks about as much sense right now as that tax law. Yeah, that's right. He's standing there. Well, it gives him something to do, right? <laughs> that's about all. Hey, Mike, light up and aim the gun. What do you do with those numbers now, Mike? One and one. He's doing what Lasorda is doing, smoking. A lot of times he'll record it and then he'll look up to Al Campanis and flash him the speeds. One and one. Fernandez throwing a lot of breaking balls, a lot of off speed pitches. So the gun hasn't been used too much. Fly ball to left field. Coming over for it is Kevin Mitchell. Two down in the fourth inning. The batter will be Alex Trevino. Walk in the second inning. career a catcher of course but he's played third base he's played second base spot in the outfield and the other night for the first time in the big leagues he played first base ball one he's a youngster from Mexico married lives in New York New York City and I said I'm I'm amazed that you live in New York fouled out of play he said it's a wonderful city. There's a marvelous educational system. The kids get a very good. He went on and on and on. I said, that's amazing. I said, where's your wife from? He said, New York. Aha. Uh -huh. oh. Now you know the rest of the story. <laughs> oh, okay. It's like Frank Howard telling me why I lived in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Went on and on and on. <laughs> said, yeah, my wife is from Green Bay. Always makes a difference, doesn't it? <laughs> one and two to Alex Trevino. It is six to nothing Mets. We're in the fourth inning. And we're really vamping, waiting for Walt Terrell to go the mound in Detroit. Two and two. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Uh, Deuces wild here in the fourth. Off speed, got him looking. Oh, what a great pitch. Half a dozen strikeouts for Sid Fernandez with a big slow rainbow and it remains Met six Dodgers nothing through four the only Dodger hit a single left field by Bill Matlock in the first inning the other balls Bill Russell hit one right on the button and lined out the third and the rest of the sort of crew they have tiptoed very quietly through four innings six runs 11 hits for the Mets trying to sweep the series and the Dodgers just one hit that Hearn the catcher is not just relying on fastballs because they got the six run lead and making sure that uh, tickets when he throws strikes uh, he's changing speeds and doing everything else if you wonder what Lasorda was looking at Diamond Vision here had a bunch of fights on there and he was being entertained by that it was interesting too. What a what a frustrating night. The Dodgers are on national television, right? An ex-Dodger is really sticking it to them. And now the Angels are going to intrude upon the Dodger Mets telecast. We'll go to Detroit and here. Well, our thanks to Larry Osterman and Jim Northrup and the action you saw, courtesy of Pro Am Sports Systems and the Detroit Tigers. We'll be back with our game after these messages from your local station. Mets six, Dodgers nothing. The Mets leading the Dodgers six to nothing, top of the fifth inning with one out. The out was a fly ball by Ray Knight to center field. Meanwhile, just to conclude the story in Detroit, a two out double by Wally Joyner, spoiling the no hitter of Walt Terrell. Reggie Jackson flied out the game is history. The Tigers beat the Angels three to nothing. So on this day today, two pitchers come so near and yet so far. Ground ball to third. Madlock at the bag. 
gets it. Don Carmen had a perfect game up at Candlestick into the ninth Six inning when Bob Brenly doubled. Centennial. And Walt Terrell had a no hitter with two out in the ninth and Wally Joyner doubled. Did you ever catch a no hitter? Only in spring training. In fact, I didn't see a no hitter in regular season until I was doing game of the week in Cleveland. Bosman did it on a Friday night. Did you ever play in a no hitter? No. Just wonder. I helped a lot of my guests. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. He made a vital contribution. <laughs> Two down. And here's Rafael Santana. He pops one up. Sacks going out to get it, but Gonzalez is a much easier play. So they're retired in order, are the Mets? For really the first time tonight, and at the end of four and a half, six nothing New York. Winning six to nothing Mets. The Dodgers have Williams, Gonzalez, and Powell. Let's check the scores quickly. Atlanta beat the Cubs eight to three. Philadelphia in that near perfecto, defeating the Giants one to nothing. The Yankees beat Seattle. Dave Winfield at the 300th home run of his career. A couple more. Cincinnati defeated the Cardinals three to one. Buddy Bell at a two run home run. 15th. He is blazing hot. Oh and one to count. Off speed one ball one strike. Pittsburgh defeated Houston four to one. Well, the Astros finally lose one. Milwaukee over Cleveland six to one. Ernest Ryle the two run home run. And Rob Deere hit a three run home run. Deere has 28 home runs. Toronto leading the White Sox 2 0 in the eighth. Mosby hit his 17th. Oakland, Baltimore, rain. Red Sox got three in the first inning at Minnesota. So at the end of three and a half innings, Boston three and Minnesota nothing. Texas trying to capitalize on the fact the Angels were blanked in Detroit. Texas leading four to one in the fourth inning. Six to nothing in favor of the New York Mets and Sid Fernandez. No drama. He's pitching a one hitter. He gave up the hit with two out in the first inning. Out away. He has struck out a half a dozen. His uh, strikeout pitch has been that slow curveball, that rainbow curveball you talk about, Vin. Mm. He's been coughing and huffing and puffing out there, but sailing along. Well, that six-run lead is kind of like a miracle cure. And a hundred-degree weather. Here's the one-two pitch. Curveball, a little flat curve. You could really watch it break. Singles to left, opening up batters in the fifth inning. I was thinking in watching the near no hitter, the average baseball fan today appears to be so much more mature. There's no more jinx, no more, you know, you're afraid if you say the guy's pitching a no hitter and the whole world comes to an end. In the old days, they tell me it would be very quiet in the dugout, but no more. They make fun and kid about it. You know, I, we saw Hank Bauer in Kansas City. He was talking about the Larson perfect game. Mm -hmm. And it just bears out what you just said. He said Mickey Mantle was sitting next to uh, Larson in the seventh inning. Ball one. And uh, Bauer said Larson turned to Mantle and said, wouldn't it be something if I pitched a perfect game? Mantle said, I'm getting up. I'm leaving. I'm leaving. <laughs> and he left. Now there's the guy pitching it. But I'll tell you something. Pitchers know they're doing it because the other team provides that service. Oh, I bet. Jose Gonzalez, Reggie Williams at first, nobody out in the fifth inning. The Mets leading the Dodgers six to nothing. The Mets, of course, with a particularly strong bullpen. Hop fly, digging out his Tuffle, coming in his Mookie. It'll be Tuffle. One away. Sid Fernandez working tonight has completed two of 23 starts. And Jeff Hamilton, a youngster, will come up and hit for Joe Beckwith. Hamilton was called up to play third base, and has happened a couple of times this year. The Dodgers have had to use people out of position. Last night, Hamilton played shortstop, and so Joe Beckwith calls it a night. with talking to Ron Paranoski about action on the ball. 
six runs, 11 hits for the Mets. Two runs charged against Beckwith. And now Jeff Hamilton coming up to hit. Hamilton, a typical rookie, he's up there slashing and hacking. He's had 85 plate appearances. He's only walked twice, and one of those, they took the bat out of his hands and walked him intentionally. But he's up there to swing. And one thing about him, the first time he played at all in Houston, Yogi Berra wanted to know about him. Yogi said, I like the way this guy swings the bat. It's enough for me. Yep. Breaking ball, ball one. Great place for Yogi would be if you ask him about a pitcher, and he'll say, he can pitch. That means watch him. had his first major league home run in Cincinnati and he had it rained out. It was interesting because the first home run he ever hit in professional ball he had rained out. I think that's a bad rule. I always have felt that. Yeah. Way. He earned it. Why should he lose it to the weather? That's right. Well too. Make a whole list of bad rules. I think not signing your scorecard and losing a tournament is a bad rule. It's like got to do with your ability to play. Two balls and no strikes to Jeff Hamilton. A little fly ball to shallow right. Strawberry coming in a hurry. Base hit. Well, for Jeff Hamilton, a modest thing and thine own, but it's also a base hit. Keith Hernandez. Sticking a needle in here. Yeah, a little bit. Well, it's not fishing. You don't draw the little things back. He thinks it's going to be caught. Reggie does. He just danced me along. Whoops, it drops. I better get the second base. And he does. I don't think Strawberry was able to pick it up that quickly. So first and second and one out in the fifth. Six nothing Mets. And here's Steve Sachs. Strike. As we mentioned earlier, the pattern has been established in the first game. The Mets led five nothing and the Dodgers came back with four. Last night, the Mets led four nothing and the Dodgers came back with four. Tonight, the Mets lead six nothing in the fifth. And it's hit down the right field line, slicing in the corner. Base hit. Reggie Williams will score. Hamilton stops the third on a double by Steve Sachs. something and they've been sitting on their hands until now. So Fernandez surrenders a run. Dodgers at second and third. Bill Russell lined out to third and popped to short.
to a beleaguered Sid Fernandez. Everybody telling him pretty much the same thing, just throw some strikes. They're trying to get him to. Well, I guess they want to kickstart him once again the way he started out. You get a six run lead, you have a tendency maybe to lay back and say, well, I can turn it on when I have to. Well, this is one of those times that he has to. Davey Johnson knows that Fernandez is a strikeout pitcher. He leads the Mets in strikeouts, but he is also leading the Mets in walks. He has 150 strikeouts, and he's in the 70s in walks, so his ratio is 2 to 1. Here's Madlock. Well, they got the right man up there. Six one Mets, fifth inning. Bouncer over the mound behind second. Tuffle underhanded to Santana. Second out. Hamilton scores. Mets lead six to two. That was good positioning because the ball was right back up the middle, and the Tuffle was playing him the pull, and he's able to make the play. Cheating towards the bag has to really wait for Santana and make sure by giving him a good underhand toss, showing him the ball all the way. And now a struggling Mike Marshall comes up with the Mets leading 6 2. Runners at first and third for the Dodgers, and Marshall is hit into a force play and struck out. Ball one. Marshall leading the Dodgers in RBIs with only 50. In 1967, Ron Fairley led the club for the year with only 55. Tom Haller led the club in 68 with only 53. He's the one guy in that Dodger lineup that can bring you into a ball game with one swing. Marshall with 18 home runs, but it's been a long His last home run came against Dennis Eckersley. Check swing foul. Two and two. Steve Sachs at third, Bill Madlock at first. Two out, two in. We got all the deuces you want. You could break Vegas now. The Mets have scored two in three innings. The Dodgers have scored two in the fifth. And look at those. Two balls, two strikes, two out.
been so long they want him to take a curtain call. Well it is a disquieting thought I'm sure for Davy Johnson. They're not worrying about the outcome as much as a nagging doubt must start about the starting pitching. Cavell fouls it away. Bob Ojeda led four to nothing in the first game, and he barely got out of it. Ron Darling led four to nothing, and he saw the Dodgers tie. Tonight, Sid Fernandez leads six nothing, and he's hanging on now, six five. And he let the only guy that could possibly burn him burn him. Sensational catch off the bat of Mookie Wilson, taking away an extra base hit. Mookie just as passed in him. He said, Well, if you do it to me, I'll do it to you. Cabell hits the ball, and Mookie, nice catch, and Kevin Mitchell some fancy footwork to avoid a collision. So Mookie was robbed, he was the robbie, and then the robber. You know, one of the strangest plays you'll ever see occurred here last night on a fly ball to shallow center. Len Dykstra made a diving try for the ball. It went into his glove, but Dykstra lost the glove. Hmm. So the glove was on the ground with the ball in it. Hmm. But of course, he couldn't get credit for the catch because he wasn't in possession of it. 0 oh, and 1 to Sid Fernandez. Here's Len Dykstra sitting this one out, at least so far. The Dodgers with two changes. the new pitcher and Greg Brock is at first base. If you're keeping score put Pena in Cabell's spot put Brock in the number nine slot. Well that's it for Sid Fernandez. One away. And I don't know why but it always seems to happen. Make a great play and you come up to bat in that inning. It happened to Gonzalez on that play he made and here comes Mook. Grounded out, robbed of the hit by Gonzalez and single. Alejandro Pena. He has the nickname pinned on him by Bill Russell, slow. And that, that sums him up. Everything Alejandro does, very, very slowly. Except throw the ball. Oh, yeah. He doesn't march to a different drummer because the drummer's too fast for him. <laughs> Step with a drum. Oh, and two. That's six runs, 11 hits. Dodgers, five runs, five hits, and two errors. He just threw this ball right by move. He didn't believe it, but it's true. One and two. Those hips and gear, but it's just by him. So two down and Tim Tuffle coming up. Tuffle is singled 
three times. Pena trying to get him for the first time and retire the Mets in order for only the second time. A drive into right, Marshall going back, and he's there. Well, that's eight in a row retired by the Dodgers, and it's 6 5 Mets. 6 5 Mets, bottom of the sixth inning. Alex Trevino, Reggie Williams, and Jose Gonzalez. Well, Joe, next week you and I'll have a look at the American League. Paul Lamar and the California Angels will listen to Earl Weaver and Gene Mock. Others will see the Cincinnati Reds and the Chicago Cubs. That's next week. Actually, it's Saturday. This being the rare midweek night game. Saturday's game of the week. One and all. Two balls and no strikes. Sid Fernandez led 6 nothing. Now he's in a battle 6-5, and he's being backed up in the bullpen. Right. When the Dodgers scored five runs in the fifth inning, that equaled a high against the Mets. The Reds, way back in May, had five runs in an inning. Ricky Anderson begins to loosen up in the Mets bullpen. There he is. And there's Mike Marshall, who got the Dodgers back in the game with the three run home run in the fifth inning. Fly ball down the right field line. Strawberry started in, but he's got plenty of room. You can see, man, why ball players would, would be so anxious to have Marshall in the lineup. You know, one swing, he gives you three big runs, you're back in the ball game. And with Guerrero out of there, he's the one big guy that, that you want to you sit on top of his shoulders. A quote that will go nowhere was the one that, as you look at Guerrero now, Marshall was quoted as saying yesterday, I can do a lot of things except drive the ball. Well, the last we saw, he drove one about 400 feet. You can't hit a ball that far to the opposite field and not drive it. You certainly can't guide it. Foul ball off first base, and that will be out of play. Marshall, of course, coming back a couple of years ago from a beaning by Jeff Reardon, who throws very, very hard. strike to Reggie. He struck out in single. Slow curveball. Hopper tonight. Two down. Good night. Ray Knight playing third. And the Mets leading six to five. Jose Gonzalez walked and popped up, made one of the two great catches tonight. He made it on Wilson, and Wilson made it on Cabell. Jose, a line single left. So, with two out, the time runs aboard, and Greg Brock will be coming up. Brock does not hit very much against left-hand pitching, and that, in a sense, is an understatement. Brock's batting average against left-hand pitching, 0 6 8. That's not very much. No, that is not very much at all. 3 for 44. Mm. Now, against right-hand pitching, it's, he's hitting 210. Great 
pitch to go on. It was just a perfect pitch to go on. Gonzalez head first slide makes it easily. Hearn made a good throw, but it's a slow curveball. He has to wait for it, and you can see uh, he guns it. He gets everything into it. Even if it had been to the second base side of the bag, he does not get him because, boy, he goes into a real head first slide and picks up speed. A lot of times the guy will stop. So the tying run for the Dodgers at second base with two out in the sixth inning. Met six, Dodgers five. Jose Gonzalez. Looked like he just set him up for a fastball, man. I doubt if he gave him a curveball there. Slow one at that. One and two. There it is. Fastball on the hands, and Brock fought it off. He was lucky to make contact. Sorta was out of it six nothing and now all of a sudden he has the time run at second base. Two out sixth inning. One and two to Casey as they call him Greg Brock. Fastball at the knuckles two and two. All right you're the catcher now what? Fastball for me. Yeah, huh? Oh yeah. yeah. No, I, I would not show him that slow curveball. Oh God rest his soul. Yeah we all miss him. <laughs> Runs 11 hits, five runs, eight hits for the Dodgers. I think he could react on that slow curveball, but we'll see. Slow breaking ball out. Ball three. Mm. Man, I'm telling you, I don't care without the strikes on. I'd have jumped on that one. Whew. Big slow curveball. Mm. Whew. Now 3-2. Fastball in on the hand. Whatever's best pitch, I say fastball. All right. Her Breaking ball. ball. Got him looking. Oh, what a pitch. Dirty pool. What a pitch. Seven strikeout. And did he ever break off a dandy on Brock? Take another look at this. This is more than a rainbow. It came around the corner and got the edge. Frustration of a hitter. Well, we'll be back. After these messages from your local state, curve for a strike. That's what Lasorda thought of. It left him open mouthed but not speechless. Boy, uh, he, he let him have it. He went after Frank Pulley. I tell you, that was a gutsy call by the catcher Hearn. Obviously, the slow curveball he feels is Fernandez's best pitch because he threw a good fastball in on his hands, but two slow curveballs, the last one on three and two. That, that's a gutsy call. <laughs> We go to the seventh inning, six to five Mets. Keith Hernandez, Kevin Mitchell, and Daryl Strawberry. That's right. You know one of the great single pitches I ever saw a few years ago. Bottom of the ninth, two out in Cincinnati, bases loaded, three and two the count on Johnny Bench. Mm -hmm. And the pitcher was Pete Mickelson, the right-hander. Mm -hmm. That's a strike. The run is going, the place going crazy, and Mickelson threw him a 3-2 palm ball straight change for strike three call. Oh, I've never seen anything quite like it. That is bad. Yeah, and to Johnny Bench, as the players would say, obscene. Mm. Owen oh, to. What's the other word? Hellacious. <laughs> threw me a hellacious breaking ball. 6-5 Mets, top of the seventh. Hernandez hit into a double play and then single twice. Two and two. Here's Ed Hearn. He was the one who wigwags out to yes, Sid sir. Fernandez. Give me that big, slow bender. Could have taken the easy way out, but he obviously felt that slow curveball was the best pitch, so let's go to it. Gotta like that. You know another thing, if you're a pitcher, you look at a catcher who looks like Ed Hearn, mm -hmm. you gotta figure he's smart. He looks the part. I mean, he's looking out of those glasses, you figure, hey, there's a computer behind him. But then the other thing is, if he was so smart, why is he catching? See, he looks smart. Yeah, he does. Three and two. Ball four. So Hernandez is aboard with the walk.
The batter will be Kevin Mitchell. Fringes telecast is presented by authority of Major League Baseball, may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form without the express written consent of Major League Baseball. Here's Kevin Mitchell. Fly to center, get into a force play, aboard on a fielder's choice. He is certainly Davy Johnson's choice for the rookie of the year, and you can well understand why. Having started six positions, hit as high as 370, hitting in the 290s now. That's right. Davy said he didn't want to take anything away from Todd Worrell, who has 27 saves. But he wishes there were two awards, one for the pitcher, one for the player. An everyday player as opposed to the guy who may not be in every day. Oh, and one. Fastball popped in the air. Pena almost fell down. And it's going to be Trevino making the catch. Pena spikes caught. And I don't know whether that fooled Kevin Mitchell or not. But Pena almost came out of his shoes. He, it was in the landing area. He had pushed off, and it was in the landing area, and he's not sure of it. And this may affect him on his next pitch because he does push off. He's all right to there. Now, right there, you see him scuff it, and now he, he really is off balance. Boy, if Mitchell had ever hit the ball back at the mound, he'd have been in a lot of trouble. Yep. He had turned his back. Mm. So, one away. Strawberry grounded out and struck out twice, 0 for 3. Hitting 263. Using Powell, Beckwith, and Pena, the Mets with Sid Fernandez. Mets led 6 0, it is 6 5. Strength against strength right there. 0 oh 2. out twice tonight. He struck out 103 times this year. Boy, he's really moving. That bat is wiggling. Mm. He's active. Look at this. Look at that. Looks like a TV antenna in a windstorm. Until he's ready to hit. And he's in the hitting position. Makes no difference what you do until that ball gets in the zone. Boy, when that ball gets in the zone for this fellow, he shows you a lot of activity. Two balls and two strikes. One out on the seven, six, five match. Hernandez at first. Keith watching Pena. corner at the knee. It's the third time tonight that Darryl Strawberry has struck out. Three strikeouts for Pena. Chavino sliding inside and caught the inside corner. I tell you, from that angle, it looked like it was inside to me, but hey, he's right on top of the plate, the umpire is. Strawberry on his best behavior. He muttered to himself, but very quietly. And here is Ray Knight. That's right. We're in the seventh. The last base hit for the Mets was a single by Keith Hernandez in the fourth inning. Contrast to Hearn, at least with Pena pitching, Trevino is moving and giving his target with his body in and out. Back, 0 oh and 2. Boy, we have a cotton candy 
sky now. I don't know what the visibility is down on the field, but it is a magnificent summer's evening here now. Although the lights have not really taken effect, we haven't had any problems with fly balls. Oh, what an evening. Oh, and two to Ray Knight. Fastball, one and two. I love Trevino. He gave the sign and then he pounded his glove close to Ray Knight inside and then just kind of shift it outside. Yeah, we used to do that in the sandlots. You do it in the big leagues. Yes. It doesn't change much. Nothing new, huh? No, sir. One and two. And the runner goes. Hernandez, a one-hopper backhanded by Russell, who throws him out. No runs, no hits. A man left. It's 6-5 Mets. And I would like to thank the pro sports system for their cooperation in allowing us to pick up the drama of Walt Taylor's bid for a no-hitter. I thought it was simply great because here we are in Los Angeles and we can watch it. It used to be in the old days you get a little ticker. That was great and we thank you. Yes, Pro-Am Sports System, thank you so very much. Come to think of it, the last no-hitter that we've had, Jack Morris did it for Detroit against the White Sox in 84. Well, our move tonight, well, we were there for that Morris one, but tonight it was unprecedented that a network joins the cable and everybody gets a chance to see it, and that's what baseball fans love. And again, to Larry Osterman and Jim Northrup and the whole crew, thanks. A marriage made in heaven. You got it. Ricky Anderson has come out of the Mets bullpen to pick up for Sid Fernandez. And Howard Johnson, in a two-for-one move, takes over at third base. So put Anderson in Ray Knight's spot. And put Hojo in the number nine spot. Steve Sachs, Bill Russell, and Bill Madlock in the bottom of the seventh inning. Met six, Dodgers five. is a Mets draft choice. He was a 23rd round draft choice in June back of 1978. He was a swingman at Tidewater starting and relieving. He signed in 78. He got to Tidewater in 80 and he's either been in Tidewater or Jackson ever since. He is from Everett, Washington. He is six feet, 175 pounds. Two and one. There's a base hit for Sachs. He's two for four, and the tying run is aboard. coming up is probably as good a bunter as the Dodgers have and yet in the first game of the series in the ninth inning Duncan had singled as the tying run against Roger McDowell a sinker baller Russell tried to bunt couldn't do it they finally took the bunt off he swung away hit into a double play this time he gets it down and Anderson will go to Keith Hernandez so the sacrifice works. Russell moves him along. Now it's up to Madlock or Marshall to pick him up. Sacks at second. One out in the seventh. Six five men.
tuffle and holding it second to size. Madlock has had a very, very tough series. And the other way to put it, the Mets pitchers have really done a number on him. He went 0 for 4 in the first game. He went 1 for 4, an infield single last night, and one hit tonight. But he has had countless opportunities to drive in runs throughout the series, and they've been able to use him as an escape hat. with men in scoring position against the Mets so far. And now here is Marshall. He had one shot and made the most of it. The three run home run in the fifth inning. Ball one. Mike Marshall 19 home runs 53 runs batted in. In addition to everything else that Marshall has had going against him, Ben, he does have what I would consider an intricate swing. I mean, he has to kick that foot up a certain way to really be in rhythm because everything you do once you start your swing is really rhythmic. And he's got almost a little half dance step that he goes into as he's swinging or getting ready. Watch that front foot. One ball, one strike. That kick start that he has. Jose Cruz has a big one, only Cruz lifts the leg up higher. He just kind of kicks it out and then strides, and, and it has to really be in sync or you're in deep trouble. One ball and two strikes. Sacks with Tuffle trying to bird dog him at second, and that distracts Marshall. Tim trying to fake at the bag to tie up Sacks. 6-5 Mets, bottom of the seventh. All three games, the pattern established early. The Mets jump way out in front. The Dodgers come back to either tie or get within one. But in the other two, the Mets won each game. Simply said, worry about the batter. What Tuffle is trying to do, he's not so much worried about trying to pick sacks off. Uh, what he's trying to do is maybe cut down his lead. If indeed, there is a base hit. They got to play at the plate, take a step away from him. But you don't want the pitcher to be thinking about the base runner with a guy like Marshall up there. You have to use all your concentrating powers to get Marshall. One and two, the count of Big Mike. And the moose goes down. Chasing the breaking ball. And for the second inning in a row, the Dodgers lead the tying run at second base. And at the end of seven, the Mets six and the Dodgers five. But the Dodgers have played in more one run decisions than any other team in the National League, with Houston and the Cardinals right back of them. One run games are so deceptive. I'm not quite sure what they tell you. Not either. Remember, Last year when the Reds won 39 games by one run everybody said boy watch him next year now. Well. Here's Ed Hearn. Check swing and a looper to right it's going to fall. So Hearn hesitant and it still paid off. Check swing single to right. Rafael Santana. <laughs> Did you see that handshake there. It was index high five. Index finger to index finger. They keep talking about his defensive ability, but in two games we've seen him, he's got like five base hits. And this one, one of those nice charitable ones, but it still counts. So the Mets get their first hit since Hernandez single back in the fourth inning on a check swing. And here is Rafael Santana. Santana 0 for 2. Remember is Howard Johnson, who is batting ninth. And uh, trying to start a fire, literally and figuratively, in the Mets dugout. 1 0 to Santana. Oh, he stood his hands up that bat handle. I told everybody his button, unless he was decoying. And that's one of the reasons you ask a pitcher to throw over in a bunt situation. It is reacting the first movement. Six five. 
five New York top of the eighth inning Hearn with a check swing single Santana trying to move him along. sacrificed one. Of course one reason is he has the pitcher hitting back of him most of the time. One and one to Raphael. He's got to make Brock feel that ball. He has no chance of getting the man over. Of course Madlock does not have a good throwing arm anymore. So we'll see what happens. One ball one strike. Ball two. Buddy Harrelson may be hanging out a sign. Ed Hearn running at first base, taking a long look at Harrelson. And a hit and run play, and a high chopper over the mound. Russell has to bare hand to get him, and on the play, Hearn advances to second. So they took the butt off and got the desired result. As Santana is out 6-3, but Hearn is in second base. And the batter now, Howard Johnson. That's a tough play for Bill Russell. If he goes with the glove, I doubt if he can make that play. He had to barehand it so he could be all in one motion make the play. And he did it unhurriedly, maybe because he'd been playing in the big leagues in 69. Here it is again. Now watch it. It gets over Pena, who has no chance to get it, and Russell comes charging in and barehands that ball. Look at this. Easy yeah. does it, huh? No panic. He and Pena make a great pair because Russell doesn't move that fast. How about Russell calling him slow? <laughs> Father used to always say, for those guys, it rains in the front, rains in the back. Well, I get excited. Oh, I get. One and oh to Howard Johnson. Johnson, one of three Mets to be on the DL this year. 23 games, he had a fracture of his right forearm. And then homered his first two at bats when he came back. Mookie Wilson was on the DL, and of course, the latest, Gary Carter. At last count, I believe the Dodgers had 13 men on the DL this year. In there. That's Ed Vandenberg. Two and one, the count to Howard Johnson. 6-5 Mets, one out, top of the eighth. Fly ball slicing down the left field line, curling foul and out of play. Nice crowd on hand tonight, although we have not received the fade attendance. The Dodgers will go over the two and a half million mark. Maybe not tonight, but certainly by Friday night. The Mets, if they maintain their average of 37,000 a game, the Mets will just miss. They'll wind up drawing 2 million nine. No New York team has drawn 3 million yet, but the Mets are going to come awfully close to it. Two and two. Fouled away. The paid tonight, we get 36,738. 36 7 3 8. Well, the Dodgers will go over two and a half Friday night against Montreal. Two and two. Good change. That looked like a Mario Soto change. That's one of the better changes we've seen him throw. Take a look at that dead fish he throws up there. And it looks like he turned it over a little bit. We'll watch his arm action and see if he does. He did, and you can see it just break a little bit outside, but the change of speeds is what really did the trick. It's four strikeouts for Alejandro Pena. And with two down, Hearn at second base, Mookie Wilson coming up. And they will take the bat right out of his hands, and they'll take their chances with Tim Tuffle. Mookie will get aboard. 
Meanwhile, left to right, Monty Basgill, Tommy Lasorda, Ron Paranowski, Joe Malfitano. All three. From the looks of things, Tuffle is going to come up and hit. They're not going to use Wally Backman. played the first game of the series and had a single and a double. And Wally at the very end there the mustache. Well, Backman sits down. That's a problem for Wally Backman because remember he's hitting 334. He has a chance to win the batting title. The trouble is he needs 502 plate appearances. And he won't get him at the rate he's going. He'll need a break at the end of the year. Ball one. So for Backman, this is kind of a, a frustrating moment. You can see he needs 35. Between now and the end of the year, he certainly figures to get it. Maybe. He got a bad bounce single and a little flare, a bloop single. Back, one and two. Yeah, they used to call them Texas Leaguers and bloopers and dying quails, and now it's a flare. Flare. Thank you. 
will show you why Tommy is so angry. And he's cussing now. He hasn't called him any names yet, but he is he's certainly... He's to the deity. Yeah, he's embellished his uh, plea. He's hollering Socia. Socia. This is why he's hot. Hernandez really makes a gutsy play here. He barehands it, and he's going to second base all the way. He had no intention of going to first. Off the bag. Yeah. Yeah, Santana was in such a hurry to get a double play, he really got nothing. Watch that left foot. Now. It's the neighborhood play. Here comes the ball. Here it comes. He's, he's off the bag. Thing was surprised that somebody wouldn't chase. Davy Johnson is coming out to the mound. Take another look at that play. Look at Hernandez. Doesn't look at first base at all. He's going to second base all the way. Give him a lot of credit. Very few first basemen would make that play, I'll tell you. He could have taken the easy way out, but you don't win pennants taking the easy way out. It's a 3 6 4 play. Matuzic is out no matter how it appears. It is 6 5 Mets. Looks like Orozco and Backman are coming in the game with one out in the eighth inning. They'll be right back. Second base, Lasorda got hotter than the weather, and it was 100 degrees in Los Angeles. So when he came off the field, third base umpire Frank Pooley hollered at Lasorda, take it easy, and that ignited Lasorda. Listen. Why? The game don't mean nothing to you. It means something to me. It is six to five Mets. Jesse Orozco, as you look at Frank Cooley, who kind of is cool and yawning. That's Another great. night in the ballpark. Wally Backman is now at second base. Backman is hitting behind Strawberry, and Orozco is in the number two slot where Tuffle was hitting. So Jesse Orozco with 16 saves trying to save this one. Ball one to Sosia. Sosia hitting for Reggie Williams. He sort of likes to put on plays with Sosia. Even with one out, he wants to stay away from that double play. Mike can handle that bat. Example of that old cliche, he couldn't find the handle. He's steaming. Kind of took a little bit of a bad house. You can see he's upset because he knew he had to play at second base. He's not really sure when he catches the ball now. It kind of goes into his belt buckle, and you can see the ball almost slip out of his hands as he went to throw it. You saw a lot of white from that baseball, and he was going to make the sure out at first. Why he just thrown that in the left field? He's explaining it now. The ball was right in my index and my thumb, and I just didn't have a good grip. Look Typical it. first baseman spoiled. No webbing between the thumb and index finger. Look at him. <laughs> well, here's Jose Gonzalez. Walk popped up and single, stole a base, made a dazzling catch in center field of a ball hit by Mookie Wilson. A kid against a veteran. Left on the bench for the Dodgers, Franklin Stubbs, Dave Anderson, and Anderson can barely hold a bat. He's got a bad finger. He just came off the DL because Mariano Duncan went on it. Pickoff play, and it gets away, but Aaron's to Santana. We've been telling you about how strong the Mets are all year. How about this one? They lead the National League in batting average, home and earned run out. The last time a team dominated like that, the 1958 New York Yankees. So they're loaded in every area. One ball, no strikes. And we all 
also told you about how overwhelming they are when they are leading late in a game. After seven, they've lost only two games this year. And after eight, if they're leading, they lost once. as we told you. Greg Brock. Uh, Johnson and Stottlemyre from right to left. And Jessen. Roscoe's from up the road. He's from nearby Santa Barbara. Even though Gonzalez represents the winning run, you didn't get the idea that Orozco really wanted much of him anyway. He will take his best shot Circle the wagons. <laughs> two and two. Two down. Six five Mets in the eighth. Dodgers at first and second. Curve ball and a little pop fly. Santana looking for help, and here comes Mitchell. The so Brock didn't have much of a swing on that curve ball. Just a little pop fly, and the Dodgers. The Dodgers making two changes with the Mets leading six five, and Vandenberg comes in. In fact, they make a couple more. Mike Sosha is behind the plate, and Len Matusik stays in the game in left field, replacing Reggie Williams. There's Sosha, and Vandenberg, who has pitched very well in his last nine appearances, coming in. Keith Hernandez. Followed by Kevin Mitchell and then Daryl Strawberry. Don't forget, friends, stay tuned to NBC Field Local News, followed by The Tonight Show starring Johnny Carson, and it's Late Night with David Letterman, except here on the West Coast. Those programs will be seen at their regular time. Hernandez hit into a double play, had two singles and one. The 
Let's go Mets. You hear that? That's something new here for me. Yeah. It started the other night. and Strawberry when the Dodgers bat in the bottom of the ninth Sachs Russell and Madlock breaking ball two and one there's Dave Anderson sitting behind Lasorda two and one The Dodgers using Dennis Powell, Joe Beckwith, Alejandro Pena, and now Ed Vandenberg. Tom Needenfuer is on the disabled list with a severely pulled hamstring. So the reliever left for Tommy Lasorda is Ken Howell. Two in the second, two in the third, two in the fourth. Led six to nothing. The Dodgers came back with five in the fifth inning. A three-run home run by Marshall got them back in the game. The Dodgers have had a man in scoring position in the sixth, seventh, and eighth, and they've left him. And there's ball four to Hernandez. Outfielder Kevin Mitchell. Johnson relaxed with the lead both in the standings and in the game a sort of restless irritable short tempered sums up how he feels about the game in the year Kevin Mitchell applied to center hit into a force play a fielder's choice fouled out uh, Kevin is 0 for 4. Come out to the park early. I was here at two o'clock. He was out here. Breaking ball fouled away. On two. I like those players that come to the park early. Mm -hmm. You don't, as Mr. McCarthy would say, Joe McCarthy, you don't rush in and out of the big leagues that way. Harrison, I think, would be decoying right now. Can't be putting too many plays on. Two strikes, no balls. Fourth place hitter up there. On two, the count to Kevin Mitchell. If you look at him closely, it would certainly come as no surprise that he was offered a football scholarship at San Diego State. Those sloping shoulders. He could make it as a team bus. Yeah. Ground ball foul outside of third. Down in the Dodger bullpen, the last man available, Kenny Howell, begins to loosen up. I can't remember a rookie then breaking in like Mitchell playing so many positions. They mentioned Alan Bannister as a rookie who broke in that way in 1984. I don't think he played as well. He was a kid who was hitting 370 six weeks ago. Golf foul. and Mets pretty much dominating it from 1979 through 84 and then Vince Coleman stepping in and of course this year the two favorites Todd Worrell and Kevin Mitchell. High fly ball to Marshall in right center Hernandez nowhere to go. One down and Darryl Sorber struck out three times tonight and you know he is smarting from that. Darrell hit the ball once in the second inning and grounded out.
Sosha indicating that the first baseman Brock will be behind the runner. That was it. One arm across the other. One out in the ninth. Six five Mets. Right. Mets trying to do something they haven't done here since 1968. Sweep a three game series from the Dodgers. Sure enough, he couldn't get back for the throw. Take another look at that traffic jam at first base. It'll be an error charge to Ed Vandenberg. Brock tried to help him and he couldn't do it. Just got through telling he's playing behind him and now he is just a little bit messed up. The throw, whoops. And Hernandez a perfect screen. Yep. Well, I guess in basketball, a little bit of a pick. <laughs> And the error charge to Vandenberg. Third Dodger error. Ground ball hard. Bad hop over Brock's glove into right field. And the run will score. And Marshall didn't even throw to the plate. The ball bounced right over Brock's glove. And I'm just surprised Marshall didn't get off the throw. So the Dodgers do it. He simply conceded the run. Wow. Well, the Mets are leading 7-5. That ball bounced right over the backhanded effort of Brock. And Marshall just looked and held on to the ball. It looked like that wild throw was going to pay off because Brock... If he's holding a runner on, he doesn't even come close to it. It looked like he was going to feel that one until it took the bad hop. Here now is Wally Backman. stolen bases so they'll have to watch him with one out and they've got him picked off he was sure gone and Brock shoots him down to Russell one three six strawberry is erased and with two out now back up there alone he just was going to go he couldn't couldn't contain himself good throw to handle Tough throw to make too, isn't it? With oh, yeah. a big runner going down, like but, throwing over a redwood. But what Brock did was move to the inside part of the infield. One and zero. Oh. Mackman doesn't hit against left-handers. He's only had thirty some odd at bats, and you can see a hundred point difference. Little fly ball to right center. Marshall is there. However. The pickoff error by Vandenberg is cashed in. The Mets cash in every break they get their hands on. California boy who was born in Santa Ana and lives in Garden Grove. Gets his feet wet in the game. Lenny takes over in center field. And Mookie Wilson moves over to left. So if you're keeping score, you would put Dykstra in Kevin Mitchell's spot. Tommy Lasorda beside himself. Bad hops are cashed in. Are cashed in, bad plays are cashed in. The pickoff was a killer. That really hurt because he they just got through telling Vandenberg that they were going to play behind him, and uh, Brock got tied up with Hernandez going back to the bag, and it really hurt him. And looking like he was ready to cry, the young 21 year old Jose Gonzalez. Steve Sachs has singled and doubled. He's two for four, scored a run, and he'll be followed by Bill Russell and Bill Madlock. Well, it's a big difference when that tying run is in the batter's box as opposed to tying run in the on deck circles. We see Russell. Out of way. The first game of the series, the Mets won five to four. The Mets led five to four and picked up the insurance run in the ninth inning last night to win six to four. 
and the top of the Dodger order came up. And now Davy Johnson sees his club almost playing the same kind of a game tonight. High fly ball to right field. Strawberry is there. One down. Friends, tonight's game brought to you by Hugo. Everybody needs a Hugo sometime. By AT&T in long distance services, information, and network systems, telephones, and computers. AT&T is the right choice. By Kentucky Fried Chicken, we do chicken right. And by Miller Lite, for great taste, there's only one light beer. Russell is lined out, popped up, walked, and sacrificed. Ball one. ball to strike one and one to show you how a ball club will change when Lee Mazzilli left the New York Mets and then came back he had only three old buddies on the ball club only three Mookie Wilson Jesse Orozco and Wally Backman two and one fastball lifted to left field Mookie Wilson is there are down to their last out. The executive producer of NBC Sports, Michael Weissman. The coordinating producer for NBC Baseball, Harry Coyle. The telecast of today's game of the week, produced by John J. Filippelli. Directed by Andy Rosenberg. The game produced by Les Dennis. Technical director, Ray Fagelski. Here's Madlock. Single struck out, hit into a force play, and popped up. had the tying run at second base in the sixth inning in the seventh inning in the eighth inning but now they're down by two with one out left fouled out of play Tommy Lasorda whose anguished cry still rings around the ballpark take it easy why take it easy this game doesn't mean anything to you it means something to me right now is one out away from his 63rd loss and the Mets are one out away from their 80th win curve ball just missed ball two. Well, they're starting that magic number business two and one to Madlock all three the Mets magic number 27. hoping for one last shot he's going to get it he's going to represent the time run It's the home run like he did earlier. This is how he hit it. Fernandez got the ball out there, and he's got all field power. And he homered into the seats in right center. Naturally, earlier tonight, it was a little hotter than now. But it is much hotter than usual. And, of course, heat helps that ball travel. Exactly trying to hit behind the runner. <laughs> oh, and one. Well, Lasorda has one last cannon up there with two out in the ninth, seven five Mets, and Madlock at first. Remember, the Mets have lost one game this year after leading at the end of eight. One. And if you're thinking about a home run, a Roscoe has allowed only. Four. Make it five. A drive to right, strawberry to the track at the wall. Yeah. Mike Marshall, like the rest of the Dodgers, thoroughly frustrated, and Daryl Strawberry. 